Hi everyone. Um, this is a follow-up video to Minister Paul um, in response to his video, um, two videos, yesterday on the 7th. Um, okay, so first of all, I just want to let everyone know that I have not personally seen his apology to me um, on Google or in my message box or by email or on my YouTube page um, because I, I do have him blocked as he says he has me blocked and banned so I can't see anything although um, someone has told me that they did see it on his Google page um, the apology to me and then I, I do see his video here um, that he posted the second one on the seventh so where he apologizes to me okay first of all if you don't know why he's apologizing I'll just fill you in real briefly I was confused about um, his uh, beheading and um, ISIS beheading and Ebola in California being confirmed by the third blood moon video and so I had posted um, a couple questions and then I posted some links to some news channels about Ebola, how the Ebola um, cases weren't confirmed in California, and in fact how they had already tested negative. And so those weren't going to support that prophecy at this point in time. And so that's all I was pointing out, not that it's not, doesn't have time, sorry, to not be fulfilled. However, I'm still going to keep a close watch on that one because April 4th will be here soon. Okay, so in that regards, I had questioned him and then he got angry. Um, he accused me of causing confusion, which I was the one that was confused um, because I just wanted it to be clear. And I think that when we do share a prophecy from the Lord, um, it should be very clear because confusion is not of the Lord and um, so we need to if we're gonna say it's from the Lord then we should make it very clear and only say what was from the Lord as from the Lord and any of our own thoughts or opinions or interjections should just be stated as our as such so that there's no confusion when listeners and viewers hear that and um, recall or wait for those things to happen. Okay, so with that said, he accused me of trying to cause confusion or causing confusion and it escalated from there um, and then he started attacking me and posting on some of my bit you know on post posting things to me and on his own video feed um, and saying some things to me so some of the things he said to me were um, I made a bad fruit and good versus good fruit video and um, he said because of this evil hatred in your heart and the pot you stirred I made had to make private the family testimony given I bet you're so proud according to Jesus your hatred is equal to murder so he's saying that because of the pot I stirred and my hatred which I wasn't hating I did don't I still don't hate or have never hated him okay um, that he had to make his family video private okay and so he had he did so let me go there he did make his family video private that um, shortly after that day or that day or that evening but then right here it is it's not private anymore okay so he said that he couldn't leave it online and so he said it was because of the pot I stirred and then um, an hour um, this was on the second they were both on the second 
He said, I, I have removed the video testimony of my family and friends from Texas, which is this one right here. Um, unfortunately, there appears to be some very unstable people out there for whom that will go to any whom will go to any lengths to silence the truth coming out of this channel, including involving my family. I removed the video at their and my wife's request. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on those involved in this agenda against me here on the internet and for those perpetrators being a stumbling block to every single person they would have reached for Christ. Nothing is hidden from Christ. He sees all. Okay, and so anyways, I will not be moved. I will not be silenced. I have no fear. Okay, so... He told me, and it says, I don't know if you can see it. It says, Mr. Paul, and then it says, uh, Mrs. Cindy MP right there. So he's addressing me, and he said, because of my, the pot I stirred, I had, he had to make this video private. And, he, and then he posted on his page saying, um, because of some very unstable people, I had to make my video private. I had to remove the video. Okay, well, he did remove it, but then he it's back up. So, you know, obviously what I, you know, the pot I stirred didn't cause him to leave it removed is what I'm saying. Okay, and so, um, and then he later posted to my, on my page, this right here. Um, yes, beware of this psycho. You were all warned you could be her next target. You will not run me off, Cindy. Plain and simple. That's right. I stayed on and deleted the video. The video that I told everybody. He made a goodbye video in January 2015. And he said that the Lord told him his time was up. He knew it was going to be 2015, 2015, but he didn't realize it was going to be so soon, he said, on the video. Um, but then, a few days later, it was deleted, and he was back on YouTube, and he never mentioned it. He never said anything to the contrary. He just came back on. So I, was, I told him, that's confusion as well, because were, are you in disobedience? because the Lord told you to, it was over and you're still on? Or did you lie and say that he told you your time was up now, but he really didn't? Okay, and then you deleted it and came back on because you, you know, you had said something that wasn't, incur that was something that was not right. So he said right here, that's right, I stayed on and deleted the video, 100% correct, and Satan hates it, and he loves being an accuser. Cindy, you are an accuser, a backbite, a hater, you are vile and corrupt, and I have called you out as evil. Light exposes darkness. So he's saying that I'm the one that's an accuser and evil and a hater, although he's the one that had lied about the Lord telling him that it was time to be done with YouTube. And then he deletes it and comes back. And he's the one who said that he had to remove the family video because of me. But then later he said it was because of a few people. But then it's still on. It's still up. Um, so that's that. And I did go ahead and analyze these two videos that he did. Um, let's see. Uh, this one, both of the ones on 2-7, so this one, and, oh no, that's the same one, sorry. And I have rewatched them, and I wrote down copious notes, um, but I don't feel the need to go into all those right now. I have lots of quotes of his written down on here. Him admitting that he was outside of the will of God at 1.20, at the 1 minute 20 mark. Um, uh, if things improve, I'll, I'll know to stay, but, if, but they got worse, but then he still stayed. He admits to deleting the YouTube himself. Oh, that's another thing. So when this escalated from February 2nd to the 4th and the 5th, 
his um, page was down, and I forget what day that was exactly. I think it was the 5th. Um, anyways, his YouTube page was down. It went down sometime during the day, and then um, he was accusing me and a couple other people he had mentioned that um, we got his YouTube de account, you know, deactivated that it was down because of all the people that were, you know, coming against him. But now in this video, um, right here in this video, he says at the 250 mark, and then um, somewhere else, he says a couple times that he admits to deleting the YouTube, uh, his YouTube account himself. But he had accused me and others of causing it, YouTube to shut it down. But he was the one that actually shut it down or deleted it himself. Um, so that was another lie. Okay, and um, he admits to being selfish by deleting it at 319 mark. I didn't handle it right. I got in my flesh and acted in my flesh. He said he sent out a Hail Mary. I don't know why we would pray to Mary or send out a Hail Mary when we don't pray to people. Um, I did come on and say, the I, he, I, oh, at 5.50 and six to 6.04, he did say, um, he did come on, and he said, I did come on here and say the Lord told me to shut my YouTube down. He admits to what I accused him of after he accused me of lying and being the, the devil, okay? He says, I sinned, which he admitted, that's basically, he admits to lying, okay? And he doesn't, he says, I don't believe in apologizing over and over for things, but that's, a, I'm not having him apologize over and over for things because, first of all, I never mentioned m me I never mentioned his drinking breakdown three months ago in all of this from the second till now. I never accused him of having that stumbling and using that against him or anything in his past. I was just dealing with the present. What happened with his prophecy video, my questions about it, and then him um, attacking me and calling me names and saying I was the one that's lying and accusing when in fact now on these videos he admits and he apologizes um, for the things that he said. Okay, so um, he's the one that got confused. He, con he, he also um, referred to me in one of his posts or comments to me before I deleted them and couldn't see them, that I always try to hide my eyes, oh, so I'll take my glasses off, so I, I had to read the small print there, um, that I try to hide my eyes, and um, I'm new agey, which then later he said, oh, I was referring to a different user, a, a different subscriber, and I won't mention their name. Um, so, yeah, he was confused of even who I was, obviously. Um, and then, but he's saying it like he knows me. And he lost self control, which is a it, self control is a fruit of the spirit. And um, whenever he's questioned, when I question him, or when other people have questioned him, he's almost like he's above. He feel it almost. He almost gives the appearance or it represents himself in the fact that he's above us and he doesn't need to answer our questions or how dare we ask him those things. That's how I feel anyway, and others have seen that. And then he also lives in fear. Um, you know, when he, he took down the, the crop plane going over his house four times and then he was saying, you know, telling everybody, you know, some, you know, somebody was out to get him. I don't even remember the video. And then another video where the two maids were there, Hispanic maids, and um, he thought that they were there to spy on him or something. I don't even, I didn't even listen to both those videos fully. 
So anyways, but we're not supposed to have the spirit of fear because fear is not of the Lord as well. So God's not the author of confusion and fear is not of the Lord. Okay, so with all that said, that's basically the only things that I had against, not even had against him, just the things I saw that were a bit unstable um, in my opinion and so then I also did, like he said in his video um, here, I did um, say that I didn't feel that he was fit to be leading um, people um, in here on YouTube if he can't have his flesh under control. Um, of course, none of us are perfect, and we're, I've said that we're not perfect until we're made perfect when we're with the Lord in heaven in glory, and we have our resurrected bodies. Um, so, not, yeah, we will stumble and fall from time to time, and none of us are perfect. We all have things that we're working out with the Lord, between ourselves and the Lord. But with that said, we um, a, minister, a minister or someone who's led to teach and, and, and um, what's the word, mentor, other believers in the Word of God should have some self-control and shouldn't be quick to lose their to lose their temper and um, or to accuse or fly off the handle and then get in the flesh. Um, they should be slow to speak and quick to listen, and they should have some. And they should be willing to answer questions and not get offended by questions. And um, they should um, they should not lie um, and make up a story for you know doing something that they knew was in the flesh, which I have seen you know as I've mentioned the things that he said and then he retracts or he changes. So with that said that um, that's why I felt that that's why I said that I didn't feel he was fit to lead others and I still hold by that until he's at the point where there's a period of time that goes by that he's able to um, not fall into those things and um, and have them under control then he makes mention um, in one of the videos um, where, you know, Moses and Paul and um, many famous and great men of God leaders um, were not perfect. And yet God still used them. And yes, the Lord uses the weak things of the world to confound the wise. Okay, but the thing is, they were all, they were all, um, sinners living in their sin or committing those sins before they gave their their lives to the Lord because God changed them. He made them a new creation in Christ Jesus. So Moses committed murder before the Lord called him and then he was faithful to what the Lord wanted him how he wanted he how the Lord wanted him to live. Paul when he was Saul, before his conversion, yeah, he persecuted and aided in killing Christians. But then, when the Lord converted him, when he when he understood and accepted the truth of Jesus being the Messiah, he no longer persecuted the Christians, and he no longer sinned. Okay, in that in that in that he didn't sin. Okay, he didn't. Um, we're supposed to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Um, and if we're in Christ Jesus, we're a new creation. And so we're supposed to um, do the things that Jesus would do and pray for that self-control and to live a godly and faithful and righteous life in Christ Jesus and not live like a heathen. Otherwise, we're just no better than the, you know, the nice atheist down the street. 
So what makes us different is that we, we, we're supposed to have Jesus living and shining through us, being an example to the world. And if you continue to have these things um, happen over and over, Paul, in your life, then you have to check yourself. We're supposed to examine our own hearts before the Lord and um, make our calling and election sure. So we're supposed to work out our, our salvation with fear and trembling. We're supposed to examine our hearts, examine ourselves, make sure that we're not living like the lukewarm Christ, Christians, okay, mentioned in Revelation, because he'll spit us out of his mouth. So um, in Hebrews 10.26, it says, If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fear, fearful look, looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. So we have to make sure um, we're not living, we're not practicing sin. Yes, we're all sinners saved by grace, but we're not to live in that sin. We're called to live, to walk and live in the spirit, not to keep walking in our flesh okay so with that said I I already had wrote and posted to his comments a couple times maybe before he deleted me or maybe it's after but I already had stated to him that I did forgive him for um, blowing up so I do forgive you um, I was never angry at you I was never trying to accuse you of anything other I'm not judging your heart only the Lord knows your heart I'm not judging your salvation I'm just examining the fruit I'm to trying I'm trying to discern how much how much you know you, I see some bad fruits so I'm I'm just examining um, and we're called to be able to examine the fruits and by by their fruits you will know them the Lord says so um, when there's questionable behavior with anyone um, that calls themselves a Christian especially if they're in leadership of any type then um, yes we need to confront those things and that brings me to when you mentioned that you went to churches all your life and with your mom and there were every, almost you know you mentioned a couple churches that you went to that had people in ministry or even the pastor himself on one of them I believe that um, hit his wife you know and so I don't know remember what the other person did but they did things that were questionable and not good fruit as you saw and so you chose to leave that church and then move on to a different one later when the Lord moved you guys or you found a different church to attend. Okay, well, my, my, um, and you said that you didn't want to be like them in the fact that they hid their problems, they hid their sin, and then they acted, you know, nice and righteous in front of everybody at church, but then behind the scenes, they would they would act out or do things okay so you didn't want so you're trying to be honest and if you have faults people see it okay well that's fine and dandy but the thing is we shouldn't have those many faults that we you know that people can see if if we're truly living a repentful um, broken life before the Lord um, we should every day we're here we should be more and more like Christ not less and less like Christ so if the Lord called you to be a minister in 2007 and it's seven or eight years now later um, you would think that you would be have become more like Christ and not less and not more fleshy so that's why I say we just need to make our election and calling sure and examine our own hearts before the Lord 
because we're all accountable to the Lord ourself for ourself. Okay. Um, so that's all I, that's why I was trying to, after you attacked me and got angry, I was trying to bring that up so that you can repent to the Lord, which you say you have. And I truly hope that's the case and that you have humbled yourself and, and given him your heart and, um, let the Holy Spirit fully take over, um, so that, you know, that's what you should have done with those pastors or teachers that had that hypocritical attitude. Um, but you left them, and, but I'm sure the Lord was faithful, and somebody else stepped in that was maybe older than you. I don't know how old you were at those times that the Lord used to witness to those people, um, to let them know how they were erring so that they could also um, see their wrongdoing and repent. So I'm sure the Lord was faithful in bringing people even though you didn't stay there. But again, you can't use that as an excuse to not attend a church. Like you said, you miss the fellowship with other Christians. And that's a big, that's a big deal because, um, that's why right after Hebrews 10.25, we have, um, I mean, Hebrews 10.26, I think right before that, Hebrews 10.25, it says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, um, as is the manner of some. So it says, uh, yeah, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, um, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. So we have, it's a good thing to assemble ourselves together so that we have the body, um, because you and I and other people out there, we can't be the whole body. Um, we're all, together we're the body of Christ, and everybody has a function and a part. No, no one is above another. Um, every part is equally important, and um, that's what the Word of God teaches. And so it says um, in Ephesians here, it says, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the, bo in the bond of peace. Okay, so, and then... Um, Okay, Galatians, walking, we need to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Um, walk in love, okay, don't commit these things that are of the flesh. Okay, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. But, okay, and then, um, all right, let me see. So, brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Okay. Um, and I read Hebrews. Okay, so I have forgiven you. Um, I was never really angry with you. I was frustrated, and I was. it's hard to... Um, translate back and forth with writing especially if it's getting deleted so thus my response back to you by video and um but you should have brought to light those things that were being done by those pastors or leaders um i'll tell you what i've had pastors um even in the church i attend now that i've been with for 20 years um, 
in the past, there were leaders, pastors or leaders, and um, not that they were living sin, in sin, but they were just maybe not, they were beating the sheep, or they were, um, you know, trying to filter in some of their own um, twist on the word or whatever. And um, you know what? God is able to do far above and exceedingly more than we can hope or imagine. And I, I wish, I'm sure I'm not the only one that prayed, but I prayed that those people would leave, not get hurt or anything, but move or leave. And the Lord was faithful. Um, like I said, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but God can do it. So you could have prayed for, the, for God to humble those people could have prayed for God to um, have someone talk to them if you if you didn't want to confront them you could have had you could have been praying for them that God would open their eyes to the way they were being um, or to have them leave so God is able to do those things but that's why prayer is such a powerful thing and so um, anyways um, but I never did mention your drinking or falling because I know that people stumble and fall. I never mentioned that. I wasn't part of that. Um, okay. And I never asked you to stop or retract a prophecy, although I am waiting to see if Ebola is confirmed in California by April 4th. Um, you had mentioned that if it's of the Lord, it'll happen, and if it's not, it's not. But if it's if you're if it, there's any doubt, you shouldn't share it as though it is. That that was my only issue with that. Okay, and with that said, um, let me see if I forgot anything that I wanted to say in here. Um, mm, I said. Yeah, you said me and a couple other people were, we were the ones that caused your YouTube account to get shut down, but then you, then you came out and said that you actually deleted it, and then the Lord brought it back. But you do have more than one Minister Paul account, and I saw that when I was, you know, trying to block you before, so um, perhaps because you still had a Google account, um, another Google account, they were able to... Um, reinstate your other account um, okay so with that said all I can share is I had meant to share this and I was waiting but um, I had mentioned it and posted it so I'll just share it but when the whole thing went down on the second and then the third the evening of the third when I was um, just thinking wow you know um, he just went off, you know, and I was just like confused, you know, and then um, the Lord told me in regards to you, Paul, false humility. And so I would just ask that you pray on that and think about it. And um, I looked up what it is and um, what's false humility. And there's some comments here. Um but it said, how do you write? False humility is pride masquerading in humble words. It's when a person says all the right words in a situation to appear more humble than they really are. I suppose every believer has committed this sin at one time or another. Pride is one of the most deeply rooted sins in our lives. Um, even when we try to squelch it, it can raise its ugly head masquerading as humility, which by definition makes it false humility. False love is equally sickening. It says, okay, so I recognize false humility in others in my spirit. Their words will sound humble, but in my spirit I discern insincerity. I recognize false humility in myself when I realize that my heart is not in agreement with what just came out of my mouth, even though I thought it was being, I was being sincere. The heart is deceitfully wicked, Jeremiah states. Who can know it? Pride is one of our biggest enemies in our walks with, walks with Jesus. It's one of the most deadly sins because scripture states that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. This is very serious. Not only will God withhold grace from a proud believer, but he will even resist the believer in 
a loving attempt to break them and show them their pride in their heart. Without God's grace, there is no hope. Pride must be thrown overboard at all costs. It's too offensive to God, and it costs the believer dearly to hold on to it. So um, this person said, appearance of humble actions. But if you go here, Colossians 2, Paul describes false teachers who delight in self-imposed worship or false humility and the harsh treatment of the body. Their uh, regulations appear wise, but in fact they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. False humility is the worldly counterfeit, counterfeit of genuine modesty and grace. Such empty philosophy is just r rules taught to men, no matter how many these and thou's you throw in. So I'll leave a link, but <clears throat> basically uses religious terms to justify cruel or questionable behavior, preoccupied with self, but a humble person is actively interested in others as as in himself we're supposed to esteem each other above ourselves listen listens to others only in order to speak into their life but a humble person listens to others with loving interest and with an ex expectation to learn and grow admits small sins but ignores major sins image control but a humble person admits sin and also receives an honest rebuke no matter how lowly the source inability to laugh at oneself with, uh, when others do the joking, okay, publicizes her own sacrifices to impress others, but a humble person avoids broadcasting her sacrificial labor, using, using himself as the standard for others' performance, but a humble person looks at the life of Jesus as the example and points people to him, affects a humble tone of voice while saying proud things. But a humble person doesn't need to affect his tone of voice to sound mealy-mouthed in order to convince others that he is humble. Believes that eschewing money or fame is the same thing as being humble. But a humble person understands that pride comes from the heart, not from possessions. Professes love for God and neighbor, but acts in a cruel manner. But a humble person is consistent between what she says and what she does. Delights in debate rather than dialogue, but a humble person sees conversation as a two-way street with much to learn, not as a battle to win or lose. Is easily offended, but a humble person is quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Believes that asceticism leads to holiness, but a humble person recognizes that sin comes from the heart, not from pleasure. Loves to impose his own opinion on others as truth, but a humble person acts charitably to all things the best of others and avoids presenting his opinions on a disputable matter as ultimate truth. Enjoys judging other people, but a humble person hands judgment over to God and instead busies herself with loving her neighbor and serving God. 16. People who exhibit false humility spend a lot of time telling you how humble they are. Okay. Um... Anyways, the Lord revealed that word to me about you, and then that um, next night on the 4th, the morning of the 5th, I believe, I had a dream, and the Lord, um, the dream basically showed me, um, I won't explain the whole thing right here, but the dream showed me that um, you, uh, you, had, you had this, um, and in the dream, you, you did, you know, it was symbolic, but it was showing me that you had this problem and, um, you didn't even act like you knew that you had that problem or you, you were pretending like you didn't have it. Maybe you sincerely didn't realize it, um, and I saw it, and so, and I'm sure other people have. And so then another dream I had on the um, night of the 6th, morning of the 7th, right before you made the videos on these two videos that you just had, uh, um, that same morning, um, the Lord told me before I woke, he gave me a word that others would come after me and um, um, you know basically tell you the same thing and so um, anyways I'm sure there's been you know 
like you said, there was other videos about you, and I don't know what they all are. But I'm just trying to, you know, share what the Lord shared with me. Um, I know that we can't we can't be ruled by our heart uh, or feelings or get overly emotional um, and definitely not lose, you know, not be um, quick to, to get angry or to bring wrath. Um, so, and I know that there was some um, cover-ups and deletions and, you know, where you said something and then you retracted it, but you didn't tell everybody. So, you, you know, I won't say they're lies, but you say one thing and then you do the other and you get rid of what you said the first time. And so it's very confusing and um, you repented of that. And I know I see that. I see that you repented of it. I just pray that your heart is truly in that place of um, repenting to the Lord. You don't have to repent to me or anybody else. Um, you can ask for forgiveness, which you have, but you have to ultimately be accountable to the Lord because at the last day, it's Him that we're going to stand before. And, um, you know, He's going to look at what we did for Him or what we didn't do. And so it says, You must continue in these things which you've learned and be assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the Word of God will teach us all things. And let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem the other better than himself. And as far as <clears throat> um, grace, yes, we're supposed to preach grace and we're saved by him, through him. Um, only by Jesus are we made righteous. But it's not a license to sin or to continue walking in the ways of the flesh. So shall we continue in sin that grace may be abound more and more? So should we use sin or grace as a license to sin? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him through baptism into death, that just, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Okay. <clears throat> and... Um, I wasn't persecuting you for being righteous or sharing God's word or witnessing salvation to, you know, witnessing about Jesus and spreading the news of salvation to everybody. I wasn't persecuting you for righteousness sake. I was, I was bringing, um, I was, I was bringing the bad fruits to light so that hopefully God would change your heart. And that's, that's all I was trying to do. So I truly hope that the Lord, um, you have you have done this, and um, I pray that He continues to grow me, you, and all believers that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to build us up and and um, lead us into His truth and um, help us keep with His strength and His mercy and His love. And his um, power enable us to continue to walk and run the race that's set before us um, with all perseverance and, and um, boldness and to, um, and to live and walk in the Spirit. Um, that's my prayer that we have a humble heart before the Lord and that... Um, Everything we do here and everything we say and everything we think is only to bring glory to the Father and um, for Him and Him alone, not for ourselves. And that um, and that He comes quickly. In Jesus' name, Amen.